still keeping it uh, sort of generic in terms of the vesicular, vesicular trafficking process, I want to talk a little bit about this part right here, specifically the adapter protein adapter function. Uh, and before we're going any further, let me just remind you what's what here. This is the lumen. So this is the cytoplasm. <coughs> And make sure you stay oriented. So now if we zoom in on this particular region of the uh, coated vesicle, so here's the adapter protein, here's the cargo as an integral membrane protein. So if uh, you believe me when I say the adapter protein is specific for the trafficking uh, mechanism, the reaction direction, then there obviously is a specificity involved in this interaction, that is the cargo you could say selects the particular type of adapter protein. But because that is specific for a particular type of coat protein, there's obviously got to be some specific interactions between the adapter protein and the coat that is going to be different for each type of um, coat, each type of vesicular trafficking direction. So if we if we focus in on this region, the relationship between adapter proteins and coats we're going to get very specific about as soon as we start talking about COP2 because those things are so closely integrated that it's really hard to tell one from the other. Um, that'll make sense when we get to it. So before talking about that too much I want to talk about this, uh, react this uh, interaction. So what's shown here is shown this way on purpose there is a cytoplasmic tail associated with the transmembrane cargo or the receptor of soluble ca cargo that is uh, the determinant of specificity between the cargo and the adapter protein. That is, it's a short stretch of amino acids that is specific for a particular adapter protein and therefore specific for a particular coat, therefore specific for a particular direction of vesicular trafficking. And when I say short, I will prove it in just a second. It's a very, very um, minuscule part of this overall protein. Sometimes it's two amino acids long. It goes by different names depending on who you uh, consult. I'm going to call it trafficking motif. Um, some people call it targeting sequence, se signal sequence, uh, which I hate. But it is so short that I really think motif is the best thing to call it. Um, and let me give you some examples of those in this slide. So these are two tables that are actually not from your text. They're from a text that I've used in the past. But it's the best summary of the information that I could uh, come up with. So I'm having to be a little bit disloyal. But in any case, uh, first of all, in terms of the relationship between the coat proteins and the adapter proteins, that's shown here along with those uh, GTPases, which we'll come back to later. So most of them, as I mentioned, are ARF. Unfortunately, the COP2 anterograde uses a different uh, mechanism. So this is one of the reasons why I say it's not the, the ideal generic um, mechanism to talk about. Um, and, and here's the nature of the individual subunits of the coat. So the adapter protein, strictly speaking, of this coat is going to be SEC, SEC24, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, but it is really an integral comp component of that coat. Whereas with, with these other two, things are much more orthodox. You have things that are clearly coat proteins and then things that are clearly adapter proteins um, that, are, that are pretty easy to distinguish and they often have uh, specific pairings between the coat and the adapter protein based on the direction of vesicular trafficking, like we want to make it a nice, uh, clean story. Moving down here to that motif that I was talking about, I erased signal sequence, which I just will not allow, uh, but sorting signals I could go along with, or uh, targeting signals, sometimes they're called. But let's just uh, start with where we're going, and that is the uh, the process of getting let me find it getting uh, the cargo out of the ER and sending it to the Golgi cargo membrane proteins in e ER. COP two sec 
uh, 24 is the adapter protein. So the motif is something that's referred to as a diacidic motif. Uh, so that's one acidic uh, amino acid, that's aspartate or glutamate, followed by a gap that can be anything, that's what the X means, and then another of the acidic ones. So aspartate separated by anything, separate uh, followed by um, glutamate, that would be just fine. Or you could flip those around. You could have R aspartate, aspartate. Uh, but all of those would be allowed. So there's three amino acids in this motif, and only two of them are even um, as specific as the term acidic. So it's a very relaxed type of sequence specificity associated with it. But it, it works perfectly well in that the COP2 coat, the adaptive protein of the COP2 coat, specifically recognizes this sequence doesn't pay any attention to any of these other possibilities and using that uses that as the determinant for the direction of vesicular traffic. The assumption being if a protein has this on it, then it is cargo for anterograde or COP2 mediated translocation and nothing else. So if you look at the sequences of some of our favorite proteins um, from this class, CFTR, for example, aquaporin, uh, those integral membrane proteins that end up on the plasma membrane, at least we hope with CFTR, they have this diacidic motif. So in terms of the other types of vesicular trafficking, so if we go to the next uh, one in the sequence that we're going to talk about in detail, that is the retrograde COP1 mediated um, process, then the principal uh, trafficking motif of those proteins is lice, lice XX, the so-called KKXX uh, sequence in which it is two uh, lysine residues next to each other followed by two um, uh, amino acids that can be anything, usually followed by the C-terminus of the protein. So that region uh, tends to be at the very tail end of the protein and is recognized by the um, adapter proteins associated with uh, COP1 coat. So while we're here, the uh, subject of the assignment is the spike, the S1 protein of coronaviruses in general and COVID-19 in particular, and its trafficking motif, which is a little bit different from the KKXX it uh, is referred to in the paper as KHX. X, so that's lysine, anything, histidine, anything, anything, and uh, not the KKXX. So it turns out that that distinction is very imp important in determining the particular pattern of uh, trafficking associated with uh, virion formation, with the building up of a new uh, COVID-19 virus particle from the individual components. Uh, at the ergic, so uh, when we when that uh, assignment is due, I'll talk about that more specifically. But I did want to point it out uh, while we're on the subject. And then uh, down here in the clathrin domain, and we're actually up here too, there is a whole bunch of uh, trafficking motifs associated with that protein. And the reason there has to be a lot is, for one thing, there are quite a few different types of adapters. So this is a adapter protein 2, adapter protein 1. There is uh, a, a whole collection that aren't identified on this table of other adapter proteins that have different abbreviations that are associated with all of the you know, Grand Central Station trafficking that goes on between the Trans-Golgi network and the plasma membrane, the Trans-Golgi network and endosomes, Trans-Golgi network and uh, lysosomes. So there needs to be a, quite a bit of sequence complexity, but even in, in that domain, the motifs are very simple. Here's a really common one, MPXY. So ferrogene, proline, anything, uh, tyrosine, tyrosine, anything, anything, hydrophobic amino acids. So there's that symbol for hydrophobicity, the phi. Lu, lu, so two amino acids form the motif that uh, can specify specific interactions with a, uh, P2 in this particular um, direction of vesicular traffic. So really, really simple um, motifs. 
And the way they work, it's going to depend, obviously, a little bit on the different types of trafficking reactions that we would talk about. But here's a, an example of one of them. And again, this is not from your text, so don't go looking for it. It's from the other one, the Lodish text. But here's the adapter protein and slash coat, or part of the coat of COP2. And here is a um, generic um, transmembrane cargo. So here's a single pass protein with the C terminus sticking into the lumen of this uh, trafficking vesicle. So the N terminus would be cytoplasmic. So I'm not going to tell you what type of protein that is, but if the C terminus is in the lumen, then it's not type 1 or type 3. So in any case, here's the N terminus, and it is being recognized specifically by SEC24. Uh, so that's going to be the adapter protein, and that's going to be the trafficking motif buried in the interior of SEC24 and not, not determined in this structure. But that's the nature of the interaction just in generic terms. And I'll try to find better pictures that have uh, zoomed in ribbon diagrams that show those things actually interacting with each other. But this is a good indication of how the adapter protein trafficking motif system works in terms of the overall recognition. And then now if you imagine the coat um, sitting out here, then it becomes much more generic. Then we can think of uh, that happening with clathrin and also with COP1.